Well, let's get more now on one of our most clicked stories, the record, world record, I should say, £80 million transfer offer for Cristiano Ronaldo. Sky Sports presenter John Desborough is joining us live from Old Trafford. And with me in the studio tonight, Luke Moore and Marcus Speller. Now, these guys are the brains behind one of the country's most downloaded spot, sports podcasts, the footballramble.com. Gents, welcome to the programme. Let me ask you both, surprised or inevitable? What do you think? I'm not surprised at all. I think this was uh, inevitable and uh, perhaps happened sooner than later. Maybe I thought it was going to happen next season, but I'm not surprised at all. Surprise is gone now, maybe. I'm surprised he's gone without a, a sort of drawn-out summer of negotiations, perhaps. <laughs> but I think it was, um, like Marcus says, it was always in the cards. And I think that um, it's probably the, maybe arguably the best move for all concerned, I think. OK, well, let's discuss that in a moment. John, are they resigned to this in Manchester? Were they expecting it? Yes, I think so. You know, Cristiano Ronaldo's been teasing us all along in these press conferences that, yes, he wanted to stay at Manchester United because it was the club for him, he said, but you got the feeling that Sir Alex Ferguson, his manager, was going to kick him under the desk if he didn't say that because he had to say it, because he was a contracted player. And we've had a good year, haven't we, of the Ronaldo to Madrid story. But can you imagine the Manchester United fans when the buzz went round this part of Manchester this morning at 9.30? logging on to the Manchester United website where it said they have received a world record and unconditional offer of £80 million. And then this was the important bit of this statement on their website this morning. At the request of Cristiano, who has again expressed his desire to leave, brackets, nothing to do with us, we can't keep him, we don't have to sell him, close brackets. And after discussion with the players' representative, because of course the players in LA at the moment, United have agreed to give Real Madrid permission to talk to him and then at noon from Real Madrid comes the confirmation of an offer to buy him and hope to reach agreement with the player in the next few days. They say officially the end of the month, but after all of those hints, Martin, from you know that kind of nudge-nudge, wink-wink from Cristiano Ronaldo, I guess this will be done this side of the weekend, if not Monday. Why do you think Manchester United let him go? £20 million is a lot of money, it's, it's in a recession. You know, <laughs> take the point. But uh, I think, as, as was said there, you don't want to play a plane for you. He doesn't want to play for you. It doesn't mm. surprise me at all, that. So um, I think £80 million is a lot of money. I think, as Luke said earlier, a good deal all round, really. Is it surprising that the strikers didn't, uh, didn't act sooner? I mean, the moment a player shows any kind of disloyalty to that Manchester United brand, they're normally out the door. Yeah, that's true. I mean, possibly did a sort of deal with Ronaldo after the Champions League final win the season before last and said, look, if you give me another season, I'll let you go, because he is a Real Madrid fan and, and he's, he's won everything he's ever going to win at Manchester United mm, already right. at the age of 24, so maybe, maybe not. So he's, ha he's had the best days. I suppose, John, with the question is, what are they going to do with the money? Aha, well, to lose one player would be careless. To lose two... Carlos Tevez, a bit of a conundrum about him. He's here on loan. They're desperately trying to do a deal with him. Across Manchester, Manchester City are saying, Carlos, come on over here. We're the bigger club in Manchester now. We've got all that Abu Dhabi money. Now, with this money coming in here, I would guess, surely, that uh, Sir Alex Ferguson will want to do that deal and keep him here. Then, uh, I guess the fans here are thinking that he's got the reputation, he's got the form, can they put their faith in him to unearth another couple of diamonds from somewhere? But, you know, he would have had those feelers out, I would guess, over the previous few days and weeks, knowing how his player, who was just such a star performer, turned into a bit of a petulant kid towards the end of the season. He must have thought, yeah, now's the time. So give me the money that I want, he can go. And he'll have a list. He'll have a list. There'll be the names on there. We've been going through some of the other fans' forums during the afternoon oh, here. A lot of them I can't scroll through because it's, <laughs> <laughs> you know, stuff that we shouldn't go on a family show at tea time. And a lot of sort of asterisks involved here. Right. Um, a lot of people, though, even what I take to be pretty die-hard Manchester United mm. fans, fairly miffed with the sort of petulance of this player, yeah, as if yeah. he is bigger than the whole club. That's yeah. right. Because he's just one guy. I know he's a rather good yeah, one guy, yeah, but sure. he's only one guy. He's quite a dislikable character. <laughs> Let's not, you know. It's, you uh, think so? Yeah. I, think, I think so. Yeah. I mean, I, he's a great player, but it doesn't surprise me that they're a bit angry about this. And as, especially as he's always, there's always been this Real Madrid rumour, and he, he came out recently, I think, and said that he was going to stay. And then, but it, I'm not surprised at all that they're angry. Yeah. Not Just having a look at the uh, the Spanish press as well. Uh, I suppose there's some incredulity from that point of view that their club seems to have so much money. I mean, he, what's he spent now? Over 150. Yes. Yeah, so depends uh, which euros, dollars, pounds that's right, you do it in. But I mean, it's a hell of a lot of money. It'll isn't be about it? 130 million pounds so far, I think. Right. With Ronaldo. 
And so, is that the end of it, or does I wouldn't it have just thought going so, no. on buying? I think they're in advanced negotiations with David Villa from Valencia. Um, yeah. There's talk of Gael Clichy, the left back from Arsenal, yeah. uh, possibly a defensive midfielder. Mascherano has been linked, and uh, Xavi Alonso, so one of the Liverpool defensive midfielders. So no, yeah. I don't think it's over. I think we've got a long summer ahead of us. That's right. With yeah. Mr. Perez uh, getting the checkbook out. Well, Perez so, has got a bottomless pit of cash by the looks mm, of things. Mm. Yeah. And he's not necessarily then the only star player when he when the new Real Madrid team is formed. Not at all. No, he's I not going to necessarily. So. Uh, I mean, he presumably get picked quite a bit. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Well, uh, but, but Perez, uh, Florentino Perez, has come into Madrid, the new president. He he loves his Galacticos, you know. And this is the, what he did a few years ago with Figo, Beckham, Zidane, Ronaldo, Brazilian Ronaldo, of course. Mm. Um, now he's doing it. He's got Kaká. He's got Ronaldo. He wanted those players. He's gone and got them. And, and and I think Madrid had to act because Barcelona have had such a phenomenal year. Mm, Th that absolutely. really would have miffed Madrid. They can't, they can't allow that in, like in a, Spain. They're not having that. No, they're not having that. Have Do you know, it's a topic, there's, there's plenty for everyone to talk about <laughs> when right. they know a lot about football or not much yeah. indeed. I'm just wondering, John, in terms of what are you hearing up in Manchester, whether, I suppose, Sir Alec, he sort of knows this business pretty well, doesn't he? Uh, maybe he doesn't need to spend big money. Maybe he's quite going to do that trick he does so well of choosing a real youngster and bringing them on. Yeah, exactly that. And that when I say he has a list, he'll have a list of all those youngsters that he thinks are in a situation where he can come in, they can come into the team and, uh, you know, contribute to where he thinks he's got weaknesses and problems. I mean, people will say midfield. People will also say, well, this is going to be Rooney's season to come because in the Champions League final, he was kind of idle out there on the wing, waiting for the passes from Cristiano Ronaldo that never came. Wayne Rooney actually privately might be saying, that's just might not be such a bad move after all. John, good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed for that. And well done to Luke Moore and Marcus Speller. The football ramble.com, is it on the air at the moment or are you yeah, doing one next weekend? at the moment and um, weekly from Even in the closed season? Yes. Even in the okay, closed okay. season. Okay, OK. We're, all, we're always on, Martin. That's all right. Always on. Good to see you guys. <laughs> yeah. Still to come tonight, the most...